English, Spanish, or Latin, computer line coding is a language, a way for us to speak to computers. And today's younger generations are quickly finding it necessary to become fluent in this language if they are to successfully compete in the future job market. The language can be summed up as a series of basic step-by-step -step instructions that are relayed to a computer, electronic device, or software application in order to accomplish a desired command or task. Now click on run and see if it, would, if it works. Ah, oh, you did it! Congratulations! As simple as the concept may seem, it does require a level of creativity and for the author to think outside the box, focusing on discovering the most direct and efficient solution to the puzzle laid before them. No, you have to put that there. Uses of the skills and talents needed to master this language are manifesting themselves throughout the district, as students in all grade levels are being taught how to approach a situation with confidence and search for an effective solution to a number of pressing situations. Okay, now that we have everyone here, can I have your attention, everyone? Just wanted to welcome you here to our first annual EHS Design Day Challenge. We start at an introduction to the Edison High School STEM Academy. Prospective eighth grade students from all four district middle schools recently took a trip to EHS and met with engineering STEM instructor, Kevin Kearns. I thank you for uh, coming, up, coming up here and visiting with us. Um, throughout the day, we're gonna have some of our STEM students and some of my advanced electronics students uh, pop in the room, help you guys with some of the design challenges. Also, you know, get a chance to, uh, you know, get you more comfortable. You know, whether you come here, whether you go to JP, you know, next year's gonna be a big year for you guys. Um, I decided to do the STEM Academy because um, the classes, you know, they, they kind of intrigue me, especially engineering. Um, I wouldn't say that like math or science are like my favorite subjects, but I would say that it's given me a lot to like think about a lot of, you know, it's a challenge and I like that. So when you say I want to consider exploring a field of engineering, do you want to be a green engineer? Do you want to be a computer engineer? Aerospace? There's all these different fields of engineering and the idea behind the academy is to expose you to all of them, okay? Here's our first design challenge. After an introduction and discussion of the many advantages the STEM Academy offers, Mr. Kernis simulated a common lesson by placing a team challenge in front of the students. The objective? Within a 30-minute time frame, create a freestanding structure out of raw spaghetti and marshmallows. The tallest structure would be declared the winner. The only rule? It must stand unassisted for 30 seconds. In theory, a simple concept that proved to have endless solutions. Like it has to reach. It can't snap it off right here. And why the hell do we do that? I know what I'm doing, trust me. The thing I like about this class is it's very hands-on. Is you know, regular cl classroom time, it's more like they teach you and then you just gotta memorize things, uh, write notes. But this class and you know, even some, like even chemistry or like biology, there were a lot of like uh, labs. And so it got you like to do things with your hands and you could really see things happening. And that really helped me. And Mr. Kearns is a good teacher anyway, so. The challenge required each team to work together and conjure an efficient solution that matches speed and quality. Some were pushed out of their comfort zone and forced to think outside the box. It, 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 it's not working out. The most direct route to an insurmountable height doesn't necessarily translate to a strong base, which can support the structure for the required 30 seconds. Our entire structure is gonna collapse. Fine, can we do one last one where we go up like this into a pyramid? Through trial and error, communication and coordination, solutions began to reveal themselves. And just like in the language of coding, the path from point A to point B proved not to be exclusive. In the end, each team presented their own unique resolution, but only one accomplished the required outcome, a structure of insurmountable height, which can stand unassisted for 30 seconds. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tower of Pizza, please. How long? How longer? 
Colin Parth, 30 inches. Congratulations. Shortly after the winner was announced, the students had a brief moment to analyze their approach and compare solutions, giving many of them the realization that perhaps a small tweak in their concept would have resulted in a much different outcome. But in the end, they're still kids, and most enjoyed the destruction of their creation more than the assembly. This experiment successfully gave the prospective STEM Academy students a small glimpse into what types of challenges lay before them over the next four years and how many of them will have to get comfortable with readjusting their approach to a given solution and finding flexibility in conceptual thinking. It's a chilly winter day at Lindenau Elementary School. And at first glance, it appears that these groups of students are playing an elaborate game of hopscotch. But in reality, they are learning the basic concept of writing code. Grouped in pairs, each team consists of an author and their robot counterpart. I am an bot. The challenge? By using simple, thorough, and exact commands. Jump. Each author guides his or her robot through the obstacle course, getting them from point A to point B and back again using the fewest number of commands. Perfect. That was a perfect job. Yeah. That was perfect. That was excellent. That was really cool. Thinking of a solution in a direct and concise manner is essential in effective coding. Unnecessary or extra steps in a line of code will slow down the process. This can delay, hamper, or even alter the outcome of a command. The students then take this knowledge and approach of conceptual thinking back into their classrooms. Third graders, can you please open up and go to your hour of code document? Okay. I'm and through simple teaching and honing of the concept of coding, students in elementary and middle schools throughout Edison participated in a worldwide phenomenon, the Hour of Code. Right close to the bottom, it says make your own apps or games. So everyone needs to scroll down to get to that part. Build as an introduction to computer science, the Hour of Code is a project set to demystify the stigma surrounding the language. It teaches the students the basics of coding and walks them through a process that results in the creation of their own personalized video game. By studying and perfecting the process, students quickly learn that coding is a language that anyone can learn. Oh, I get it now. The benefits of immersing yourself in the language and the world of computer science go well beyond the creation of your own Flappy Birds video game. As the technology grows, so do the career options. Computer science in the 21st century continues to be one of the world's fastest growing career opportunities, associating itself with professions and businesses across an ever-growing array of prospects. Few people know more of the enormous impact computer science and coding has on the professional world than Catalina Kowal, a systems engineer from Cisco. She graciously took time out of her busy schedule to speak with students at Lindenau Elementary School. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, taking some time. You know, at the, at the basis of it, coding um, is just giving instructions in a very special language with special terms. I mean, that's, that's basically what it is. It's just another language, just like Italian or French. Um, and once you understand that language, then you can communicate with machines and tell them what to do. In anything you might have an interest in, you can find technology. It definitely gives us a, another tool in our mental toolbox to, to figure out different problems and to relate to different things. So I, I think it's absolutely essential. The more you can learn, um, especially about something so, uh, so integral in our, in our world today, um, right? Everything runs on software, everything is getting directions, everything is starting to be automated. Um, so I think, I think it's really important. And whether 
the students today end up coding for the rest of their lives or they don't, it's still that tool in their toolbox that they have that exposes them to technology. Um, because uh, you know it's important now and it'll continue to be important in the future. You guys use um, Study Island? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, think about it, right? We have to have a path to get there. Okay? Here you are in school, Study Island is God knows where, maybe in the cloud, maybe in another building, right? We need to have the plumbing to get the information from wherever that's sitting back to you. I'm definitely a purist when it comes to to just the fundamentals of computer programming and, and I'm you know, I'm very aware of the discipline and the development of analysis that comes along with being able to you know, to learn programming. Um, so I, I definitely think that it indirectly to some extent, it really sharpens a student's ability, a person's ability to think through a concept from beginning to end. Linda Now Coders, are you ready to hear how many lines of code we did during our stop, drop, and code this afternoon? At Linda Now School, we coded 2,876 lines of code. Give yourselves a great big coding hand. All told, the thousands of lines of code presented by the students during their participation in an hour of code represent the ease at which the language and concept can be grasped. But what about the practical use of such a skill? What do you want me to do? Meet now. An autonomous, programmable humanoid robot developed by Aldebaran Robotics. Its uses within the Edison District are numerous and quite exciting. ESN TV caught up with some students at J.P. Stevens High School who are being given the chance to work directly with the robots. Android robots, yes. They're meant to be sort of learning assistants for younger kids. Mm -hmm. Like they're preloaded with a couple programs which can help with like addition, subtraction games. They study their capabilities, responsiveness, and imagine the possibilities and benefits they could offer to children throughout the district. I was, I personally was really surprised of like how much you can program into it and how like customizable it is. This is a really good idea because it's just so helpful and like so intuitive and just fun to work with. And like the end product is just so rewarding. The students' knowledge of code writing combined with their own imagination and creativity are giving life and potential to this future tool for education. Originally it was a bit overwhelming, like there's actually a lot to take in when you come into the interface and like how to program everything, but then once you get up to speed with like the basic programming tools, it's pretty easy to work with. It was just nice to see another version of a programming system that actually allows for easier user interface because I've worked with Java and that's a lot more complicated. Like you could click on the certain boxes and see the Java roots, but it makes it a lot easier to just see the boxes and just drag and drop. Although it's a little bit of an easier programming experience, the point of it is that so people who are, who are not exactly the most experienced with programming can also work with it, but it's definitely opened me up to like understanding how programming works in it, um, and that sort of like computer uh, field of engineering. The desire is to have these units interact with younger and high-risk students, aiding them in their understanding and development of social skills and educational concepts. The students have been working with um, the teachers in learning the software and the programming aspect of it. During the Edison Board of Education caucus meeting in November of 2014, the students were given the opportunity to demonstrate to the public the progress they have made when the robots led the meeting in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shortly after that, a simple meet and greet with Edison's youngest students at the Early Learning Center quickly turned into a robot-led dance party.
computer science and coding is by no means a recent concept. It is, however, one that continues to develop and change on a daily basis. The necessity to become familiar with this language is growing at an ever-increasing rate. But the students of the Edison School District continue to show their excitement and confidence in the ability to master this level of communication, thereby multiplying their own ability to get a head start on their already promising future.